Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. I'm Tina. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do this month's blog hop, but I just really enjoyed doing them, so I'm kind of squeaking this one in at the end. Been really busy. Uh, I want to start out uh, with a huge shout out and thank you to the very many messages and cards um, I got. Um, in regards to my husband's um, melanoma they were able to get it all and they don't believe it went into his cheekbone or anything so we're good to go um, stampers and crafters you know you guys are amazing it is such a it's a lot more than paper than paper and ink and stamps and uh, it meant a lot to me so I just wanted to shout out to you people for that and thank you very much so let's jump in I am um, last uh, week I did a video for you on stamping on foils and using the different types of archival inks to do it I love it it's a great technique and for today's I mentioned in there I was going to show you how to do soot stamping s-o-o-t stamping um, the real way to do it is a little bit difficult it can be messy and it can be a little bit dangerous in your craft room and it's where you use a candle to actually burn uh, soot onto photo paper or foils and that sort of thing um, today I'm going to show you a pseudo way or faux way to do this technique it's simple it's quick and you still get the same effect you're just not doing the dangerous thing where you're burning paper with a candle in your craft space the other good reason for doing a pseudo way or faux way is that you can do this in your classes and things you don't have to worry about 10 people in your class with a candle and paper <laughs> you're gonna light stuff on fire so I'm going to show you a faux way. Now, you can do it. I've done it on golds and silver foils. Here's one I did on just some silver foil. A little pine cone action there. Love it. You can also do scenes. Okay, this one I did a little uh, foreground stamping. And I did the, the pseudo uh, effect. It's really simple to do and I'm going to show you how to do that now you can do it on golds golds came out really good I've got some trees here with some pines in the background some foreground leaves and some different grass type uh, looks there so you can do it on any color of foils and it comes out really pretty so here we go we're going to make this one today okay this one comes from in the new mini catalog is a new set called peaceful deer coming out and what's really cool is it comes with a coordinating punch how cool is that isn't that adorable let's jump in we're also going to be using the background paper i have here is one of the new papers that will also be coming out and it's called Peaceful Place. And I love that it has the grays and the whites and the silvers. You know, you don't need to always be a traditional red and green Christmas. I mean, th this is how this turned out. So let's jump in. So first thing you'll need is a piece of foil sheet. This is just our silver foil stock. And remember I told you to stamp on the foils you need this this kind of pigmented ink because pigmented ink will uh, dry on a non porous surface okay our regular inks won't now you do have to let it set a little while you can hit it a little bit with your heat tool but I would say before you mail them or give them away let them dry a day or two and then you'll see they'll dry and won't come off I did this one yesterday afternoon and you see the inks not coming off 
Um, somebody asked me in my last video about spraying a sealer on them. Um, my apologies that I really can't say yes or no to that because I've never used any sealers. Um, the only sealers I've ever used was when I was doing pastels and I used just a real fine mist of hairspray as a sealer. Maybe that would work on here, but I'm not sure if it would affect it by the color. I mean, I would think if you're going to spray a sealer on it, I would definitely wait until it's all the way dry. Um, that's just my opinion. If somebody knows something about using sealers and foils, um, please feel free to comment below. So we have our piece of foil and we're going to take our archival black ink and just a cotton ball. And I found if you use a cotton ball, you're going to definitely get more of that uh, kind of random uh, spotting and inking. So you want to just dab it really well and fill up your paper. Now if you do streaks, you know, it's going to be a little different. So I just kind of dab it, fill it in, spread it out. And as many of my techniques, it's another messy one. You know, I love that. I don't, I don't mind getting ink on me. It's all fun. It's kind of funny when I'm at events or something with family and they're like, uh, what is all over your hands? Oh, it's ink. That's what I do. I play with ink. You know, it washes off. No big deal. My pad might be getting a little dry. I'll have to refill it. I've been doing this technique for a couple days now. So you just want to make sure you have a good coating and it can be you know lighter darker blotchy because that is what you would get if you were using a candle um i might be able to i have a cheap and if you're going to use a candle for the technique if you decide to do the real sooting uh technique use the cheapest candle you have um <laughs> I um, actually buy party light candles from a girlfriend of mine and I always have for years because they don't leave a soot and I tried to do the sooting technique with a party light candle and it wouldn't work because <laughs> the candles too good quality so use a cheap quality candle if you're gonna do it and I'll show you briefly it remind me at the end and I'll try to show you briefly how that is done if you decide you want to try it I'll have to grab a photo sheet if I can, maybe. So I'm just getting my sheet all nice and blotchy. I think I put my finger there and left it up. Okay, so we got our nice blotchy sheet here. Now you're going to take a stamp. This is also called negative stamping. Um, you can do negative stamping, I'm sure, with uh, a lot of people do it with uh, alcohol inks and ink lifters and stuff like that. Oh, well, there's an idea for another tutorial for you. So I'm going to take this little stamp. Now you can do this in your Stamparatus. Um, and you know I'm a big use it all the time, but it seems to work fine with the blocks. So all I'm going to do, and make sure it's clean, so I'm going to wipe it off. You don't want any ink on it, and you kind of want it dry so that it'll lift off. I've got a piece of uh, cotton ball fuzz here. Let me see if I can lift it off. There we go. Cotton balls, you know, a little bit cheap, so they kind of shed. 
So now you're just going to take your clean, dry stamp, which mine has something on it, because it's going to show up everything. Let me make sure it's clean. Because this particular one has a little saying on it, so I want it to show up. Now you're going to take your stamp, and this is going to be a slippery surface. So try to stamp straight down. Hold it into place for a second to pick up that ink. And then pick it up. Look at that. How fun is that? Um, and you just keep going. So let's grab... Let's grab his horns here. We'll grab a small block. We're just going to put his horns on there. And now I want to do a few little background trees. They're also in the set here. You can tell by my stamps I've been doing this a bit. I'm just going to go to the horizon here. And wipe it off in between. Make sure it's dry. And then stamp it again. Now you can kind of do layering. Like I did here, you can see the trees in the background. So I stamped my main trees and then I did trees in the background. And then stamped a, a larger stamp toward the front. So you can keep layering this. It Because it's in archival ink, it will dry, but it will also stay wet for, you know, a while. So you can do all this kind of different stamping on the same image. Okay. And in this same set, you've got some ground. So we're just going to grab some ground here. Let's have him running on the ground there. Look at that. Let's add one more little piece of ground here. And we are good to go. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And look how quick and simple it is. You could keep going. They're in this little set. You've got you've got pebbles and greetings and things like that. But remember, if it, when you're doing this, I would use um, more solid images because that's what's going to show up. You can do outlines, but that's all you're going to get is just an outline on your on your sheet, and it make him it may come out pretty cool. So let's go ahead. I'm going to use the fun, peaceful place um, background here that's got some silver stars. And I'm going to mat that on some black. I forgot my little glue hand. Alright, so let's glue our mat down. You could even, instead of the black mat that I'm doing here, um, if you wanted, you could do a silver mat. That would look pretty. Okay, now I need to be careful with this because I don't have my heat gun over here. So I'm just going to try to work with it from the sides without touching it. Okay. And we'll glue that one down. Isn't that pretty? How fun is that? Okay, I'm just going to use, um, try not to touch it on the edges, and I'm just going to use some dimensionals to pop that up. Okay. 
kind of hard when you're not supposed to touch anything. Of course, that's the first thing you want to do. You can always set it aside and, um, you know, put it together the next day after it's dried. I mean, maybe your fingerprint in it might be a nice little extra. So I decided not to do a greeting on the front of this one because in the deer it says a wet fun. So it kind of has its own greeting. And then I'm just going to put it on a smoky slate, slate base. And there you go. How quick and simple is that fun technique? Experiment. Use different colors of foil. If you want a real vibrant something in the foreground, use your silver brilliance ink. Go ahead and stamp your image in the silver, which will make it bolder. You can do your background like this and then stamp additional images in the silver or the gold like I did here see the foreground leaves how bright they are those I stamped in in the gold over the top of the rest kind of did the same here on the grass so just play with it and experiment it's a really fun technique um, a good thing for this technique is if you have images that you want to do um, masculine cards um, maybe do a silver and use um, the lighthouse set and do a lighthouse scene or you know or just these simple holiday ones here with a little pine cone on it that is all I have for you today and that is called faux soot stamping or pseudo stamping whichever you prefer the terminology and one of our new holiday stamps be sure if you don't have the mini catalog yet and you need one, please message me and, I'll, and you don't have a demonstrator, uh, please message me. I'd be more than happy to send you the new mini catalog and celebrations that launches. And like I promised, I wanted to show you really quick how real soot stamping is done. You'll take a piece of glossy stock or photo paper and you can use a cheap tea light candle. Like I said earlier, uh, I found that the quality candles don't really create soot, so they don't work. You can also use a lighter. So what you would do on the glossy side of your cardstock is you are going to run it through the flame. And now you got to do this fairly fast. You can see where I told you that can get dangerous. You can light this on fire very easily. But that's how you create the soot. So you use a flame to go over your glossy stock or photo paper. And then you would stamp on it the way you do here. Now, if you do it the original way with a lighter or a candle on your stock, as you see, it comes off you would have to figure out what kind of sealer you could put on this. Um, uh, like I said, I don't know if hairspray or not would work or some sort of sealer, but that's how you do regular soot stamping, is you create the soot with a flame and then you stamp into it the way we did. So as you can see, the faux way or the pseudo way is much easier and a lot less dangerous to start things on fire in your craft room and it also when you use the flame as you can see it warps it pretty good so that is how you would do that and I wanted to remember to share that with you so thank you August thank you for joining me and enjoy the block hop have a happy stampin day bye bye now